Kevin Ring from Nationwide Video. Today I'm going to show you a basic setup using Nova Star's Nova LCT software and also how to utilize Nova LCT as an offline simulator. This will allow you to test your workflows before you get to show site and no hardware is required. So I have the latest version Nova Star, Nova LCT 5.4.5 and we see up here it says no hardware. If I were connected to a live system, that would be a problem. You do want to make sure that it does not say no hardware. Uh, you do system reconnect, verify that the USB connection is intact and that your network settings are correct if you're going with network. If I log in now, rather than logging in as advanced synchronous system user, I'm going to log in as demonstration mode. So in demonstration mode, the password is going to be admin, A-D-M-I-N. I select admin and now I'm logged in. I have the full feature set of Nova LCT. To start a new wall, I'm going to go to screen configuration. This is where I'm going to configure a new screen or restore a configuration. Nova LCT is broken down into three tabs, sending card, receiving card, and screen connection, each with a specific function. The sending card page is where we're going to set up and configure our sending card. The sending card is another term for processor. Here is where I can change my input source bit depth from 8-bit to 10-bit to 12-bit. I can change my input resolution for the EDID. I can also set a custom resolution utilizing standard EDID protocols and EDID rules. If I were doing in-process or redundancy, I could also set up my backup, pro uh, my backup ports within the processor down here with the redundancy table. I can also, of course, set my video input. Typically, we leave that as automatic. The second page is probably the most important. This is the make or break page. This is the receiving card page. This is the page where I can manipulate and configure my receiving cards, which is the essentially the brain on each cabinet. Here I'm able to load and upload RCFG files, or receiving card configuration files. I can do this one of two ways. I can load this from a file if I have the RCFG or RCFGX already on my computer or USB, or I can read from a receiving card on my wall. Ideally, this will be our first step. When you hit read from receiving card, it opens up a tab saying which receiving card do you want to use, which processor, which port, which panel. When in doubt, 111 is always the safest bet, but you can of course change these. I hit OK, and it's going to now read back the information from the receiving card. According to Nova LCT, my receiving card now has a pixel matrix of 128 by 128. This is very important to know for the next page. And then all the information down here is preset and preloaded from the configuration file itself. It's very important that you do not come in here and manually manipulate these values. There is a high probability that you could mess up your wall. <laughs> That was my automatic lights. So I apologize for that. So once again, it's very important that you do not type in any values here by yourself. All of these values will be uploaded by your RCFG file. Then of course, be sure to hit save. This will save to hardware. So the important note that we have here is I've read for a receiving card. I want to then send to all receiving cards. The option is to send this RCFG file to all cabinets or just to specific cabinets, which I can then select over here. I always like to do all cabinets. Now I'm not connected, so I will not click it, but I would normally do send. The third tab is the fun one. This is the screen connection page. This is the tab where you tell Novastar how you wired up your wall. Now the important number here, of course, is the receiving card size. The default of the software is 128, 128. It just so happens that my panels are 128, 128 as well. But if they're not, there's no guarantee that this number will automatically update for you. If that's the case, you want to type in the pixel matrix of your receiving card here. Set mine to 128, 128. Now, of course, there are a few rules about how you wire up your wall, but for the most part, as long as you tell the software how you have it wired in reality, it should work. Now, of course, we do want to deal with squares rather than odd shapes, but we'll talk about that later. 
So with the sending card enabled and the Ethernet port selected, you can click on the wall and draw your map. If you make a mistake, you can right click and that's going to delete the last one that you did. We also have these handy dandy paintbrushes here which allow you to pre-wire and map the entire wall very quickly. As your wall gets bigger, you're able to make this go full screen and zoom so you can see more and more of your wall. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. So once you finish up with one port, you can then move on to the next one, on to the next one, on to the next one, and so on and so forth. Now with Novastar, you don't have to make all the ports match. I personally like to but there are a few numbers you have to stick under, specifically 655,360, but we can talk all about that later. Now that I have my wall wired, I'm gonna hit send to hardware. It's gonna ask if I wanna send and save. I hit yes, it's gonna send, and voila, my LED wall should now be working. So this was just a very, very basic nutshell of the steps to configure your LED wall. Of course, there are gonna be some caveats. Uh, this is really like the best case scenario, but if you don't know where to even begin to start, uh, try out these steps and I think you're gonna have a good time. Once again, Kevin from Nationwide, thank you.